I would be speaking on elections and since the broad theme is uh, innovations, as I was told that I have to try and connect it with innovations. Uh, so what I have done uh, is to look at what innovations has taken place in Indian elections. We had 17 national elections. We are heading for the 18th national elections in few weeks time. And besides the national elections, we also have a lot of state assembly elections every year. So I'm just trying to look at the innovations, uh, how, what kind of innovations has taken place in Indian elections. Uh, so why innovation in Indian elections? What? Why do we need innovation in Indian elections? I think it's very clear. To, uh, the election Commission wants to do innovations in Indian elections to facilitate the conduct, uh, conduct of election. When I say facilitate, for the Election Commission to conduct free and fair election, and also the second aim of innovation is to figure out how to facilitate voters like you and me uh, to cast their vote, to make them more comfortable when they want to cast their vote on the election day. And also to, you know, make voters more interested in elections. So this is all about innovations. I'm trying to take you back to the first Lok Sabha election, the first elections. Uh, this is the image of the ballot boxes. And as you can see, the ballot boxes in the first Lok Sabha election, the first election was party-based. So if you want to cast your vote, uh, there are different parties with the symbols and these were kept like this on the stage. So if you, have, if you want to cast your vote to party with the symbol, this lamp, you walk to that booth, you walk to that ballot box and you put your ballot paper in that box. Uh, but later on, it was realized that it was not keep it, it. It didn't help your help in keeping your vote secret because if you are walking to this booth, this ballot, then people can know. People means at least people who are conducting the election. They would know which party you have voted for. So that was the first election, and then it was placed like in this sequence and. Polling agents who can who are conducting election they won't be able to see uh, the ballot boxes. So this is this was the first election. This is how ballot boxes have changed over the last several elections. 1952 it was small, when it became bigger in 1962, 77. So these are all images of ballot boxes and the innovation took place as per the need, as per the need of elections that if there are many candidates, more candidates you need a, or more political parties contesting election, you need a much bigger ballot box. Uh, these are two uh, interesting images to show. This is about the ballot booklet. We have been hearing about ballot paper in Indian elections. You, None of you may have voted on the ballot paper now because we are voting on electronic voting machine. But earlier, it used to be kind of a sheet of paper with the marks of the uh, the symbols of political parties, names of political parties, and the names of the candidate. Whichever party you want to vote for, you just put a mark and put it in the ballot box. But why it is called a ballot booklet? Because in this constituency in Tamil Nadu, there were 1,033 candidates contesting election. So it was a kind of a booklet like a small booklet and you have to flip pages after pages to figure out which party or which candidate you want to vote for. Historic, because this is the constituency and this is the election when we had the largest number of candidates contesting election. And this is the biggest ballot box. Now we don't have ballot boxes. We have small ones for what we call postal ballot. But this is the biggest ballot box uh, for 87 candidates in East Delhi. Uh, but since I'm talking about innovations in elections, you can see that we have moved a long way from using ballot paper and using ballot boxes to now electronic voting machines. So now the votes are being casted on electronic voting machine. No more ballot paper, no more ballot boxes. You go and just press a button and your vote is casted. So this is the image of the electronic voting machine. Uh, it was first conceived in 1977. 
then used first time in 1982 elections in Kerala, but ever since 2004 it is being used in all the Lok Sabha elections and all the state assembly election. The institute where I work, Center for the Study of Developing Societies, Election Commission, commissioned us to do a study in the 90s, mid 90s. to figure out the legitimacy of the electronic voting machine in the eyes of the common voters so we did studies across the country in few state to figure out what do voters think about electronic voting machine legitimacy and and the faith in the voting machine do people realize that they their vote is being casted accurately or not and the report was very very positive i'm not saying that based on that report but the point i'm trying to say every innovation which election commission has done in the process of conducting election for the for conducting election uh, it is based on a lot of feed, feedback they take feedback from various sectors various uh, uh, people so that's one uh, feedback which we gave and now we are the indian elections are being conducted using electronic voting machine uh, if you are following indian elections if you reading newspaper you would have figured out that for the last few years maybe a decade ago there have been controversies about the electronic voting machine the secrecy of my vote because some people believe that i have pressed button for party a how i can be sure that my vote has been casted for party a i'm not sure whether I, my vote went to party a maybe it went to party b so lot of campaign lot of controversies are around that and now it was uh the onus was on the part of election commission to offer some explanation to that that you have to because as election commission has to uh, the duty of the election commission is to conduct free and fair election and you as a voter must be convinced that your vote has been casted in free and fair manner so a new thing which has come up which is vv pat which is which stands for voter verifiable paper audit trail so this is a new system which has come up i will show the um, the image in the next slide the how does it function if you when you press your button you cast vote for party c and then there is a unit kept separate to that a, a slip comes out you can see that if you have pressed the button for party c the symbol of that party it will come out you can see that your vote has gone to that party and then that slip you know drops in the box there you you won't be able to take the slip away so that that was to make election more transparent to give voters a sense that elections are free and fair and there is no issues with regard to electronic voting machine if it comes to whether my vote has been casted at the right place or not casted at the right place mean you wanted to vote for party b and the your vote has been casted to party b it's not that you are casting vote for party b and it is going to party d so this is the vv pat machine uh this is the kind of vv pat machine i am not sure how many of the youngsters have ever casted their vote uh, if you have casted their vote you have realized you would have seen this vv pat machine but it is for the benefit of those who have never casted their vote but i think 2024 election is not very far and this would be the time for you to cast your vote uh, there is a lot of campaign by election commission to mobilize the young voters to mobilize the youth of this country uh, through various innovations they are also trying to innovate to mobilize the young voters of this country so this is the vv pat machine uh how to check bogus voters as i said the mandate of election commission is to conduct free and fair election earlier if you if we look at elections in the 50s 60s 70s 80s so your name is on the electoral roll there is a uh, electoral roll on on which your name is there you walk up to the polling booth on the day to cast your vote and the person sitting there would ask for your name it used to be the situation earlier but now i'm going to tell you about what innovation has taken place in that so you say my name is ramesh kumar there was no way to verify whether you are ramesh kumar or not a few follow up question could be asked what's your father's name what's your address so a lot of bogus voting used to take place my name is sanjay kumar but i 
walk up to the polling station and i say my name is manish kumar which is my brother's name nobody can recognize that whether i am sanjay kumar or manish kumar or Ra- ramesh kumar i can cast my vote so there was a lot of bogus voting because there was no way to identify whether the person who has walked up till the polling booth is the real person whose name is registered on the voting on the voters list or not so election commission decided that we have to move ahead make election more free and fair stop bogus voting machines so they innovated this idea of the innovation was to issue an epic card a voters identity card so a massive drive was taken by the election commission to issue identity card voters identity card to every citizen eligible to vote if your name is on the election electoral roll you should have a voter identity card but after a decade election commission realized that this is a target which they will never be able to fulfill so a lot of a massive drive was undertaken by election commission to issue voter identity card to everyone but when they realized that they will not be able to issue voter identity card to each and every voter registered voter so again a new innovation innovation in the sense of ideas all innovations are not in concrete innovations are also about ideas so they came up with the idea even if you don't have an voter identity card but if you walk up to the polling station with any of your identities you will be allowed to cast your vote and now there is a long list of 18 types of identities and you can imagine all kinds of identities identity card anything which has your name your father's name your photograph and your address so that's a new innovation which has come up that first moving on from an anonymous voter you an anonymous one you can say anybody's name in the 50s 60s 70s 80s till the early 90s now you can walk up to the polling station on the election day if your name is on the electoral roll you go there you show one of your identities and you will be able to cast your vote so that's a new innovation in election in in terms of identity of the voters uh this is interesting in my mind when the electoral rolls were being prepared in the for the first lok sabha elections 1952 uh in the villages many females are names of the females are not known to many people they are known by someone's wife someone's mother someone's father daughter in law etc etc so when the first election took place and the voter list was being prepared electoral roll was being prepared so the team from the election commission went to the villages and what happened is that it was largely a male team which was not allowed inside to and were not able to talk to the females nor normally not allowed inside the houses so they were preparing the electoral roll and what happened is that when they when the whole process of registering the name of the electorate was done it was figured out that a very large number of women were listed as some so and so's daughter so and so mother so and so's wife etc on the electoral roll when they went to vote it was very difficult for anyone to identify because the names were not there and almost 3 million voters women voters were missing on the voter list because it was very imagine 75 years ago because people didn't knew the name of the women in in many of the houses uh from there now we have moved a long way now we have voter list on which we have names of all the registered voter in 90s in the 90s if you wanted to check your name on the voter list you have to you know go to the district headquarter but now if you look at the innovation you can log on to the website of the election commission go to your constituency look at the polling station and you will find your name and the latest addition to that is that there are voters list with your name with your photograph also which is not accessible to the people but it is accessible to the political parties so from you know like 60 70 years ago 70 years ago where names of the women voters were listed as somebody's wife and somebody's mother we have moved to a situation now where you can even sitting in the classroom you can you know look at uh 
you can check your name whether your name is on the voter list or not so that's a huge huge innovation or a huge change which has taken place in the last 70 decades uh this is an interesting innovation of indian elections quick check whether you have voted or not so when you go to vote a uh, ink has is put on your finger a mark and this which is called in 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 uh, in del in ew ink you it is very difficult you can't remove that ink and that has been in place right from the first lok sabha elections right from the first election and this ink is being used exported to a very large number of countries uh, because this is a unique innovation of india indian elections and this continues even till today and you can see the mark this is tn session casting his vote and the mark is being put and this is being used in almost six, more than about 100 countries in the world this indian ink is exported in a sense indian uh, all the countries use this ink to you know quick check when voter cast their vote it is put on your finger we, we used to hear about you know when you talk about elections and you talk to the people are you going to cast your vote and the immediate or normal response used to be who is going to cast the vote kon dhoop mein khada hoga line lagayega it's very crowded it's very unruly the atmosphere is not good uh that used to be the dominant views about indian elections or about the polling booth oh, who is going to spend the you know couple of hours standing in the polling booth booth crowded booth so election commission thought of new innovations how to make it a pleasant experience that when you go to vote when you stand at the polling station you should feel good about that and new ideas have come up election commissions came up with the new ideas and some of the images speaks of the new kinds of polling booth and how it has made the experience your experience as a voter pleasant this is about the model polling booth so there are model polling stations which are you know like uh decorated you have facilities for tea you have facilities for drinking water there are also facilities for the crutch young women going to vote with small children in their arms where do what do they do how do they vote so there are facilities for crutch there are facilities for first aid medical facilities for serving tea coffee etc etc so from a time when polling booth used to be far off you have to walk up till 10 kilometers to cast your vote so polling booths have become has been brought much closer to your house it is mandatory to have a polling station within 2 kilometers of the distance from your house uh, while it is mandatory to have the polling station within 2 kilometers it is far less than that it's like next door mostly polling stations are next door and these polling stations are all some of the polling stations are also kind of you know like with all kinds of facilities uh these two images about the women voters some of the women voters or women voters didn't want to go to cast their vote because they used to find it very crowded they don't want to stand in the queue with men and women standing in the queue jisko kehte dhakka mukki ho rahi hai pushing each other so that many male member of the family didn't want the women to go to the vote kyu jaoge why do you want to stand in that queue long queue somebody pushing you uh, so election commission thought of new innovation what to why how to facilitate women or how to encourage women voters to come out to vote so first in many polling station now you will see separate queues for men and women no big innovation required it was only thinking how do you think to encourage women to vote so two separate two uh, separate lines at the polling station one for the men and one for the women and more than that now you think of you see the pink polling station because even if there were separate polling if separate lines for men and women some women used to think i will go inside but you know how do i because you have to show your show your face means you have to identify yourself as a voter so there are men sitting inside i don't want to talk to them all kinds of taboos with lot of rural uh, women voters living in the rural india so these are pink polling station which is totally managed by the women women uh, officials so it's an all women polling station all women will vote in that polling station and all the polling officials managing the polling booth are women so from a time when it 
polling youth used to be very, very crowded. Women didn't want to go and stand in the queue. We have moved and the innovation has come to the stage of pink polling station. And you see the impact. If you, you Just to cite a data, if you look at the first few elections, Lok Sabha elections, 52, 57, 62, the gap in women and men turnout used to be very large. 17, 18% less women used to vote compared to men voters. Now, if you look at the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, men and women voters have voted in equal proportion. There are now 16 states where women voters have outnumbered men. So this innovation is not only, you know, kind of for, you know, these pictures, but it has made a huge impact on how elections are taking place. Women are turning out to vote in much bigger numbers now. And as I said, in 16 states, women are voting out, uh, voting, uh, turning out to vote in much bigger numbers compared to men. This is the latest innovation. Polling station, you know, coming to your doorsteps. This was, I think, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we had never, we, we would have never imagined this. So if you are a senior citizen, earlier it was 80, 80 years, now they have increased it to 85. So if you are a senior citizen, registered as a voter, and you feel that it would be very difficult for you to go to the polling station to cast your vote, now election commission has made it possible that election commission will come to your house. And sitting at your house, you can cast your vote. For that, you have to register yourself few days in advance. I think 30 days in advance. You register that I want to cast my vote sitting at my home. This is the latest innovation. Look at these two pictures. These are the you know two senior citizens sitting at home, trying to cast their vote, just sitting at the home. Uh, I think very pleasant and a very noble idea that and uh, encouraging senior citizens to come and cast their vote. We would have never imagined 20 years ago that this can happen. This is how the counting used to take place. Now we have EVMs. Earlier we used to have the postal ballots. So when the postal ballot used to be counted, it used to take three days to count the votes. After only three days, two and a half days, one would know which party has won. And this is an image of, you know, in front of Lal Kila, big hoarding is there and how people are watching the election results. See this, people watching the election results, which party is leading in how many seats. From there, the new innovation, the counting is taking place. You don't need to go anywhere. Even if you are having tea at your home, you log on to the election commission website and you get all the updates which party is losing from three days of counting we have you know come back we have reduced the counting to almost three hours six hours so this is a innovation new innovation which has taken place not only the process of election conducting elections have changed even the there are innovations in how we conduct polls you must some of you must have heard about you know opinion polls exit polls so there is a lot of innovation in that also. And this is an idea of the innovation. Uh, 20, say 20, 20, 30 years ago, the voting question, which party you have voted for, we used to ask it in an open form. But we realized that people are may not be giving you the right answer because the secrecy of their vote was getting revealed. So we started using this ballot box, like the ballot box being used by the election commission. So the people who go to the field to conduct interviews, they used to go with this box with a slip. This is the slip, the dummy ballot box with candidate's name, with the party symbols. And people were interviewed in the poll using this ballot box and the ballot paper. So innovation from asking the voting question. Open, Moving on to the secret model, secret way of using a ballot paper and a ballot box to ask the voting question. And now, the latest one in the app. Now, we don't even use this ballot box and ballot paper. The app is on the mobile phone. All the people who go to the field to do the surveys on our, you know, on our institution's behalf, they don't 
carry the ballot box in the ballot paper no more questionnaire in their hand it's all paperless so they go with the app on their mobile phone and all these images are on the mobile phone and people who are interviewed cast the vote on the mobile phone so these are the new innovations which has taken place in the elections and new innovation which has taken place in how we conduct these surveys there are a couple of things which are being talked about should we not move in the direction of voting on internet or what we call remote voting there are lots and lots of issues about that and the issues is about the secrecy of vote imagine if you are if you can cast your vote uh, on on internet sitting at home the secrecy of vote will get challenged so there are a series of innovations which are being talked about but i think there are serious issues about some of those innovation i don't think this is the time to talk about thank thank you